Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back with another production video here on the channel where I share tips and tricks about what I am learning to make my workflow more efficient. And one of the things that I do here on the channel is operate all of the production gear myself while I am recording the video. I can switch cameras here in real time, basically recording everything live to disk so I don't have to do as much editing later. And it's certainly uh, allowed me to produce a lot of content every week because we're not spending all that much time in post-production when we are done. In many ways, this workflow mirrors what people do in a live stream. Uh, so therefore, a lot of the things that I encounter as challenges, I think live streamers will encounter as well. And one of the big things is that when you want to change camera angles or zoom in or out, uh, you often have to get up and adjust the camera manually. But there are cameras out there that can help you uh, without having to get up at all, which is something like this camera from PTZ Optics. This is a pan, tilt, and zoom broadcast camera. Uh, that is actually reasonably priced given the market that it is in. It can stream video out at 1080p at 60 frames per second. You can use HDMI or SDI, but this camera also supports the NDI standard from NewTek, and we covered that standard just a week ago here on the channel. I'll put a link to that video down below so you can get more of a context as to how it works. But the basic gist of it is that when you plug the camera into Ethernet, it will take the video that it is capturing and make it available to uh, software packages like vMix or OBS or hardware devices like the TriCaster uh, as a regular video input. It comes in just like any hardwired camera would, but you can put it anywhere on your network. So you can imagine the power of having something like this in a school or a house of worship, someplace where you're often uh, a far distance away from where the action is sometimes, but you want to bring it into your production. Uh, these cameras really uh, eliminate a lot of the distance barriers that you might have run into before, and you can control them remotely too. So you can pan the camera, tilt and zoom it, and make things a lot more interesting for your viewers in the process. Now, I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from PTZ Optics. We'll probably be doing some other things with this camera in the near future, although I am considering buying a few more for uh, new cameras here in the set. Uh, but all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into the hardware now and see what this camera is all about. Now, the camera we're going to be looking at in this review view is their 12x zoom model. Uh, this is kind of the entry point. Without the NDI, just HDMI and SDI, these sell for $1,600, which might seem like a lot, but really for this kind of camera and with the visual quality that you'll see out of it in a few minutes, I think it's a reasonable price. I paid about that much for uh, the two camcorders I'm using running the uh, studio right now, but the optics on this one look better to me, and we'll again explore the optic quality in a few minutes. Now, if you want the NDI built in, it'll cost you a little bit more. Uh, those sell for about $2,000 because there is some licensing involved with that purchase. They also have a 20X version for a little bit more too if you need uh, more of a zoom there. Now, on the back here, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. We're not gonna spend too much time on all of these things, but there are a few things worth mentioning. Uh, there is a serial in and out here because some systems require control via serial. So you can plug in your serial uh, ports here and get uh, your camera operating that way. The power switch is right here. You have a choice though of how the camera is powered. So you can plug in a standard power adapter here or you can use the ethernet port here to also power it if you have power over ethernet. Uh, we just got in the other day a power over ethernet injector that I'll demonstrate in a few minutes so that you can uh, basically transmit power over the same ethernet cable that you're grabbing the data from. And that of course will ease your installation costs because you don't need to wire up AC power along with the ethernet. Basically any spot where you got an ethernet port, you can power your camera and that can be really, really useful. Now you've got two standard video outputs on here as well. And you can output video through the SDI, HDMI and the NDI simultaneously simultaneously, uh, which opens up a lot of other possibilities too. So you could have the camera hardwired into a video switcher, for example, but then grab its video over NDI for a live stream or something like that. So you can uh, do a lot here. Now what's really cool about this camera, especially as it relates to the HDMI output, is that it's capable of 1080p 30 frames per second output and that is a 30p output. And what's interesting is that a lot of cameras don't support 30p 
out the HDMI. All the camcorders that I had before the two that I bought about a year or two ago uh, were outputting 1080i, which was giving us interlaced video, which resulted in jagged edges and a lot of uh, issues with the video quality. Uh, this will give you a progressive 30 frames per second out of that HDMI port, which is, again, not a common thing out there. And you'll discover that if you try to plug in a cheap camcorder uh, to your capturing system and you're capturing at uh, 30 frames per second. Uh, you can set some other resolutions here at the bottom and again the max on this camera is 1080p at 60 frames per second. And then of course right here you've got your Ethernet port. Uh, right here is a line in so you can actually bring audio into the camera also. Uh, so if you had somebody mic'd up you can have the mic coming in through the camera and then it would output the uh, video and audio through your video outputs here or uh, through NDI. So you have some ability to bring in a line in as well. I'm not sure what the USB port is used for on this particular model. They do have other models that are USB cameras, but uh, in this case, really what you're going to be using is the NDI uh, or the uh, regular video outputs there. So that's the overall hardware. Let's power it up now and take a look at some of its visual quality. And what we're going to do instead of using the power adapter is power it over the Ethernet port. And you've got two options for power over Ethernet. One is to use an injector like this one, uh, which you plug into your network like I did here, and then uh, you connect the camera up to the other port here, and uh, this will essentially get it going. But you can also use a power over Ethernet switch if you want. Uh, it does require 30 watts of power over Ethernet power uh, in order for it to work, so you definitely need a uh, beefier option here if you are looking to use power over Ethernet. But it can be very convenient because we could locate the camera uh, about 300 feet away and still power it only with the Ethernet cable, which I think can be uh, very useful. And when the camera boots up, it'll show up in your favorite production application. Uh, right now we're using my TriCaster, which is a hardware-based solution. Now this looks very busy, so I'll walk you through what we're looking for here. Uh, in the upper left-hand quadrant is where all the inputs are for my TriCaster. So input one here is my camera. You can see me waving right there. Input two is another camera plugged directly into the TriCaster. But below input two here is input six, and this is the camera. This is coming in over the network, but it appears like any other source would appear here. So you can see me zooming out and zooming back in, and I'm controlling all of that from the lower left-hand quadrant where you can see I have the pan, tilt, and zoom controls. So as I move this fake uh, little joystick here with my mouse, you can see me controlling the camera. So remember, we're getting video back over that ethernet cable, but we're also controlling the camera over that ethernet cable, and we're powering the camera itself over that single cable. And that is the strength of a power over ethernet device like this, especially when you pair it up with something that's NDI compatible. So I'm gonna show you two other ways that you can use this camera that cost less than a TriCaster, and then we'll go in and take a look at some visual uh, examples of what the camera can do. Now the first thing I want to show you is the NDI Studio Monitor. This is a free application. It's running on a Windows 10 computer right now. And I've got on-screen controls here so I can zoom in the camera, for example, and get in really close on that bracket there, and you can see how that's working. Uh, then you can also use those controls to move the camera around using the mouse. Uh, so I can go here to the left, for example, or to the right. And what I can do is set presets here, too. So I can click on uh, Store here and 1, and then I can zoom out. Let's do that real quick. And then uh, store that in Setting 2, and then I can very easily jump back and forth uh, between one view or the other. So if I go to one here, it'll zoom in. And if I go to two, it will zoom back out again. So there's some flexibility you have there. And the other cool thing is that although we are currently using this with a PC, uh, my TriCaster is still receiving the image from the camera as well. So you don't have a limit as to how many different devices can tune in to the camera simultaneously. And I think that adds a lot of flexibility because now it's not a one-to-one -one relationship, but a one-to-many. Anything that's on the network using an NDI compatible piece of software can get access to that camera. And I think that can be uh, very, very powerful. Now, the other cool thing about the uh, NDI Studio Monitor is that you can also use an Xbox One compatible controller to control the camera. So if you've got any interns that are uh, used to playing video games here, the process is very simple. I can use the controller here to kind of fine tune my, uh, my camera. And I also can use the analog controls here to go uh, faster or slower on zooms too. So you do have a lot of flexibility with this to 
uh, be able to more finely tune the image. I did find there's a little bit of latency uh, when you are moving the controller around, but you get used to it after a little while and things look pretty nice. One other cool thing that you can do with the studio monitor software here is record. Uh, so we'll switch back over to my uh, computer screen here and I can click on this record button and record footage that the computer is currently receiving from it. It'll store it as an MP4 file on the hard drive when I uh, stop recording that. So uh, lots of flexibility here with the included NDI app. And what's neat about this is that you could be using some other piece of software to stream out your production, but you could load up the studio monitor, monitor here and control it with an Xbox controller. So you can basically set your camera person up in the control room next to you across campus. And with an Xbox controller, they can control the angle of that camera while you focus on what is going live and what is getting ready to go live. Pretty cool stuff. Let's take a look now at OBS. So on my laptop right now, we've got OBS loaded up. This is a free streaming and recording application. You certainly can't beat the price. And we're going to go over to the sources option here. And this is where you normally add your cameras. So of course, you could add game captures and HDMI capture devices, but they have a plugin called NDI Source that is free as well on the OBS website. And we're going to add this to our production here. And when you install that plugin, it will find all of the NDI devices on your network. And here we've got the PTZ Optics camera. And I'm going to select that and click OK. And up it shall come. And there you go. We can get the image from the camera and integrate it into our workflow as before. Uh, the one thing there, the NDI plugin doesn't support yet is uh, PTZ operations. So there is a, an additional plugin that you can download from PTZ Optics also for free. And when you pull this up and connect to your camera, let me just put in the IP address I have for it, uh, we can control it uh, with many similar features to what you saw before. I don't think you can use your game controller with it, but uh, you can get your shots set up here. You can adjust the speed of uh, the pan and tilt here and basically control it. Uh, from master control like you could with a TriCaster or uh, with the other studio monitor application we were using before. And we can also set presets like we were doing earlier. So I can set this as preset one, and then I can zoom in perhaps a little bit and set that as preset number two. Got a big box of stuff to review here. And then if I want to go back to preset one, I can just zoom out here or hit the preset here and zoom back in. So you have all the same controls here just with a little extra interface to get all of that done. But if you are really on a budget and don't want to spend a lot or anything on your streaming application, I think you'll find OBS is a great place to get started. I just recommend having a fairly powerful Intel i7 based computer for the best experience here. But it's really amazing what you can do in software these days. And uh, this is a great example of it. Now there's another way to control the camera and that is with its included remote control. And there's a bunch of stuff that I want to talk about with the remote. Uh, so the first thing is, is that you can basically just take it out and uh, control the camera uh, with the arrow things here. And what's funny is I'm actually across the room right now and it's able to pick it up uh, pretty easily here as I move the camera back and forth. I can also control the zoom here like we did before. And I can even do a slow zoom if I want as well to control the speed on that. Uh, so really flexible with the remote. You can also set presets like we did before and the remote will support multiple cameras. So you can actually switch the camera that you're controlling up here and get more than one PTZ optics controller controlled with the remote control. So in a pinch, uh, this might be the way to go. I also wanted to show you briefly some configuration screens that they have available too for getting the white balance and the color and the exposure set properly. Uh, because one of the things that you'll find if you're integrating this with other cameras is that you want the color to match and it will take a little bit of work to get that uh, camera here to match with the one you might already be using. So you'll do that uh, through your exposure, color, and image controls. Uh, you can go in here to color, for example, and you can uh, set the white balance to auto here, or you can go through and do some manual settings on it. Um, so it's got a, a lot of features that you would find typically on a production camera for getting everything set up and operating. Uh, likewise, you have a number of exposure options on the camera too, so you can really get this thing tweaked and get it very much manually configured to match whatever you need for your production environment. I'm very pleased with the overall image quality on it. 
Um, the zoom on it is a 72-degree uh, zoom when it is all the way out, so it's pretty wide angle. In fact, I think you can see me <laughs> over here, uh, and then we can get in very, very tight on here. You get a really nice bokeh on it, too, once it focuses in. Right now, it's on its autofocus mode. I found the autofocus to work really, really well. It's very quick and responsive, uh, especially for me in a uh, one-man band operation. I really don't have time to focus after moving the camera around, so it does find uh, what is in front of it uh, relatively quickly and is able to adapt quite quickly too here as we uh, move the camera around. So I've been very, very pleased with the overall image quality. Uh, it wasn't too hard to get the uh, camera set up and match to my existing uh, cameras that were in the studio here, but I did need to uh, spend some time doing it. And that was one of the advantages that my TriCaster has is that it does have a vector scope so I can uh, see visually uh, just how close the colors are as I was getting things configured. But overall, it worked pretty well. Now, one other note about the NDI that this camera is using, uh, this is the NDI HX format, uh, which is a compressed format. We looked at this last when we reviewed the uh, new tech NDI Spark device, which is a device that allows you to plug HDMI devices into the network essentially over NDI. And I also want to show you something else that you want to configure when you first get the camera because they have the camera on a lower bitrate setting than it's capable of. Now there is a web-based control panel here on the camera that you can log into to make some setting changes on it. I do believe it supports RTSP in addition to NDI, so you'll see here in the video section uh, there are a few different things that you can configure. Uh, but what you want to do if you're using NDI is go over to this uh, NDI preset setting. When I first logged into it, it was set to low, uh, which is about 4 megabits per second uh, at the maximum. So I was noticing a lot of compression artifacts. The image was okay, but it wasn't as good as the Spark was. Uh, so what I did is I went in and adjusted the NDI preset to high. And I think this one maxes out around 13 or 14 megabits per second. So you'll get a much higher quality image. It'll still be compressed, but not as compressed. And I think that will eliminate any real compression artifacts you might be seeing. But typically in the environments where I think this camera is designed to be operating in, uh, you really probably won't notice them on your stream given that it is getting, getting compressed on its way uh, out to your viewers and whatnot. But again, if you are very sensitive to any kind of compression artifacts whatsoever, then opt for the uh, other camera that doesn't have the NDI license and just go in with the HDMI because this will be using the uh, HX compressed format uh, for NDI. But again, I haven't really seen all that much in the way of uh, bad artifacting here as I'm using it. Again, about in line with what I saw with the Spark. You might see a little bit of it there as I'm moving the camera back and forth on the black area of that mount there. But again, generally, I don't think this is going to be a problem for people that are using this to stream events and that sort of thing. And if you're curious to see what kind of network utilization you can expect here, it's going to be about 13 to 14 megabits per second, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. And that's because the camera is compressing the video. So there will be some variation in the bit rate. Uh, if you're also curious about audio delay, this should give you a good example of that, whether or not you'll see any. Uh, the camera right now is coming in through the network, but my audio is hardwired into my TriCaster. So usually you're looking at about a frame or so of uh, latency with NDI, and generally I found it to be very, very low latency, and you can be the judge based on the lip sync here. So overall, I am quite pleased with this camera. I'm very happy with the optics on it. I'm very happy with the autofocus with it. I think it's very well suited for the markets that they are approaching with this, which are, uh, in many cases, houses of worship and schools and uh, operations like mine that uh, need this kind of technology, need a good image, but don't have the budget to buy the really expensive stuff. And I like the ability to get the NDI integrated into this camera uh, along with the uh, HDMI and SDI outputs as well. It's got a good range of motion here. It won't go all the way around, but you can see uh, just how far it goes. And uh, the motor is very quiet on there. It won't distract your uh, guests and hosts and talent and everything. And again, the price point on this one, I think, is pretty reasonable uh, for what they're offering. And what I like about this, too, is that if you are a one-person operation and you don't have a lot of help, uh, you can do a lot more now with the ability to control the cameras remotely, even if you're across a campus, thanks to the NDI protocol. NDI really is a game changer, and it's nice to see it getting integrated into products that are 
uh, coming down in price. So that's going to do it for the PTZ Optics Camera. We'd love to hear your feedback on things you'd like to see in addition to what we just did here in the video. I always like to do a more general approach to this kind of stuff because I think a lot of people are just looking for something that's going to work and that's kind of the approach we take here with these reviews. But let me know down in the comments below what you'd like to see in a follow-up. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Bill Reiner, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.